And the students are very smart these days. These youngsters are very smart, you know. I mean, they do their homework very well at home before going to a class so that they can catch their teacher in the class. Okay, now I know the source of your teaching. Now, that was a challenge for me. I had to redefine my role in order to make myself relevant in the classroom, which I had lost, actually. So, the role of the teacher is, as I said, not of a giver of a knowledge. The role of a teacher today is that of a processor of a knowledge. One who can filter relevant from the irrelevant, who can distinguish between what is useful, what is not useful, what is relevant, and what is not, irre what is not relevant. Now, that's a different kind of a role. So it has to be processed. The interpretations are available at many places, YouTube, Google, etc. So my role as a teacher in the classroom would be, how does the poet arrive at that interpretation? How do I process the different stages, you know, which help them arrive at that particular interpretation. So, the role is to make your learner autonomous and independent learner so that when I teach one poem, they should get a skill and the abilities to read other poems, not only by the same writer or poet, but other poets also on their own. So, liberating a learner, making the learner autonomous. That's what we should do. There was another news that I read in the Times of India, the future of work. And J.P. Morgan Company has pumped a huge amount of money into giving training to the youngsters to make themselves future ready. And I just read out a few lines, two, three lines you know, from this newspaper. 75% of business globally expect the process of automation and technologically upgrading to mean that workers will be required to develop and learn new skills in order to meet the evolving demands asked of them by their employers. So these philanthropists are pumping a lot of money into this kind of training. Now, what should be the role of the institutions then? You know, dear students, I think every age throws up its own demands, its requirements, its challenges, and it is for us as humans to meet them and to face the challenges. No man is an island unto himself, and as responsible members of social fraternity, we have to acquire skills and competencies to contribute to the growth and the well-being of the society. Our journey from Stone Age via Iron Age, Industrial Age, to the modern technological and artificial intelligence age has been quite, quite adventurous, exciting, and at the same time, quite educative also. We started with a piece of stone as our sole tool or equipment for hunting for food and thereby for survival and then transitioned to the age where knowledge was acknowledged as the main source of power and leadership. But today, knowledge alone is not enough. Information alone is not enough to grapple with the demands and challenges of the global society. Then what do we need today? What we need are skills. And we can have three types of skills. Well, you already heard about this wonderfully articulated uh, four or five skills by Moshmi. We need professional skills. We need technological skills. We need life skills. And we also need some kind of spiritual skills. Otherwise, you know, I think unaccompanied by the spiritual skills, all other skills are going to throw you into the cobweb of depression. So in order to get out of that cobweb of depression and cogmire of depression, I think you, we do need some kind of spiritual skills also. 
We have many examples, I think, who have been dropouts, and you all are familiar with Bill Gates and Zuckerberg and uh, Steve Jobs, etc. They all are Harvard dropouts, you know. Why? Because they had wonderful dreams, and they had conviction, they had passion, they had, they had zunum, pagal te wo sare ka sare, because they wanted to pursue their own projects and make a difference to the whole world. They were dropouts. Education, degree-oriented, result-oriented education wasn't what they were looking for. They were looking for something which could help them translate their dreams, their passion into reality. And you know the result, you know, what difference in the, they have made in the whole world. So in our educational system, unfortunately, the focus has been more on handing out information and knowledge pieces and the students too have become degree and result oriented. I think all of you must be aspiring for topping your classes, getting first rank in our classes, getting 80%, 90%. My goodness, I mean, this is mind boggling. I simply don't understand, you know, how can a student get 90%, 95%, 99%, but you are getting. And that cut off, you know, as I was sharing it with, the, with my young friend, that the cutoff in a percentile is 99 point something in I am Ahmedabad. Wow, great. So what happens to those, you know, who are working in a college called Barefoot College? Have you heard of Barefoot College? Nagge Pamwala College? Well, there is a college called Barefoot College. It was founded by one IS officer who gave up his services as a civil servant and decided to work with the villagers in a place called Tilonia in Ajmer district in Rajasthan. I think uh, if you get a chance you know, to visit that place, you must go and visit that small village called Tilonia. And this gentleman, Bunker Roy, he topped his IES exams, worked as a civil servant for a few years, and then suddenly got disillusioned about the power and the money, the kind of, you know, the facade of power and money, you know, which surrounded him. So he gave it up and went to that small village against the wishes of his parents. Now, I don't know how do we respect the family values, <laughs> because he was madcap who decided to go against the wishes of his family because he wanted a life, as you said, the founder of this Bayerwood College. He still works there. And his wife, I think some of you must be familiar with this name, was Aruna Roy, who is a champion of right to information, RTI. She is also a civil servant. She also worked as an IS officer for about 10 years, then gave it up and joined her husband's, you know, uh, this social work. I mean, today our demands, requirements, and needs and expectations and aspirations, they have become multi-directional, they have become multi-dimensional as well. And to meet them, to cope with them, we need different kinds of skills. We need professional skills, as I said. We need technological skills, we need life skills, spiritual skills. And we need them to be competent and effective and productive workers and the managers. We need them to be sensitive and vibrant members of the family. It is not simply to be a professionally adequate and powerful beings, but also very sensitive and vibrant human beings. We need them to remain cool and balanced. I think if we don't know the art of remaining cool and balanced, all other things will be of little value to us and maintain amiable interpersonal relationships. In nutshell, we can say that we need these three types of skills 
to be useful and responsible citizens. We need these skills for our own well-being and for the well-being of the, of the society. The skills and competencies have to be... Now, this is another thing. Every skill may not be effective, useful in every situation. All the skills that we acquire, they have to be context-specific. They have to be situationally relevant. What works, how and when. They, this is the parameter, you know. Which skill works and how it works and when it works. Let's take for example, you want to stitch a torn shirt. You need a needle for that or you need a sewing machine for that. You don't need a sword for that. So what the needle can do, the sword will not be able to do. So it's a context-specific skill, you know, that we require. Similarly, when e-commerce, this Flipkart and Amazon and Alibaba, uh, e-commerce or the online shopping came up, there was a huge demand of bikers. Hmm? There was a huge demand of van drivers. There was a huge demand of the workforce which was empowered with driving skills and technical skills to use GPS system. Because if you don't know GPS system, you will not be able to get a job in online or e-commerce kind of thing. And you need skills for smartphones also. Yes, a smartphone should be banned. That's right. But then they are important and very useful tools for all of us. The kids will be very happy, will be most unhappy if you tell them not to use a small smartphones. But I would like to, uh, you know, make a strong plea to these young children to keep phone fast for a day in a week. So let's keep phone fast. Rakhte ho na, brat rakhte ho. Somar ka brat hai, Mangalwar ka brat hai, Hanuman ji ka brat hai. Ek din ka brat rakho, aaj mene smartphone ko touch nahi karna hai. That is a challenge to you. I don't think you will be able to maintain that phone fast even for a couple of weeks, you know, but do take a...